you, you touched on collaboration and it's a very important point because what we find often is that I think and it's somehow connected to even that internalized Islamophobia where we're all competing at, like we think we're all competing for the same mm -hmm. funding or we're going to the same donors um, and then you find that seldom do we want to collaborate or open up with one another or be transparent with one another. So what are some practical steps from your experience organizations and individuals can take to really start trusting one another and learning how to work with one another? Yeah, so that goes back to the scarcity mindset versus the abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. So our family um, did a three-year action-based initiative um, based in Indiana University Lilly School of Philanthropy. So we did it in um, 2020. The first year was, um, I'm sorry, the, the initiative ca is called Community Collaboration Initiative. And the first year in 2020, the goal was collaboration through trust building. We brought together 25 Muslim-led nonprofits in the legal sector, the mosque sector, in the um, uh, community organizing se sector, in the public policy sector. We brought 25 organizations together and we said, okay, let's have monthly conversations. Whatever you want to talk about, we have a facilitator that's um, you know, trained in facilitation to do this work with you. So we went from 25 um, organizations to 22 organizations in the first year because some organizations really just didn't have the time and the capacity, but they also didn't want to be vulnerable. Trust building is probably one of the hardest things to do, but rebuilding trust is even harder. So in our Muslim-led nonprofits, as Habib can tell you, um, he meets people every single day. Like you're talking to this organization and that organization, but how many times do we put in our calendar, I need to meet with this organization every single month, and I want to discuss this, and I want to be vulnerable, and I want to learn from the person that's doing this, and I want to share my findings and my challenges and my strengths with that person. So what we did with Community Collaboration Initiative the first year was just have honest conversation. It was really hard. It was really hard. Um, as a funder, I wasn't allowed to be on the call while they were having the conversations, but I would hear them afterwards. So I would hear all these 25 conversations afterwards every single month, and I'd be like, wow, this is really hard. It's a three-year research-based initiative. So I didn't know how we'd get to year three, but alhamdulillah, we are in th year three right now. So in 2020 was collaboration through trust building. 2021 was collaboration through doing a project together. So the 22 organizations had to get together in their group and do a project that they wanted to do without additional funding from any other source. So they did a project, our mosque drew, group, which was consisted of Islamic Foundation North, Mecca Center, MCC Muslim Community Center, and Nigerian American uh, Associ Nigerian Islamic Association. These are four groups, completely different budgets. One has a budget of about 500,000, where there's two of them that have a budget of about $8 million. They were so great about getting together and doing a project on mental health. They were like, that's the most important tarp. Like, this is what we need to do. So they did a webinar during the month of Ramadan. They created their flyers. They got their imams. They got their youth coordinators. And it worked really well. So that was year two project. While the year two project was going on, we did something called a year of learning. Year of learning was really to understand the philanthropic community. When I talk about the philanthropic community, there is the Muslim philanthropic community, which is just a beautiful lake and we're swimming and we're doing laps and we're really comfortable. We're all giving because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to give. Our faith asks us to give. There is this ocean. The ocean is filled with trillions of dollars. It is community foundations and it is foundations like Ford Foundation, Bush Foundation that has lots of money. But our Muslim donors and our Muslim nonprofits have a hard time going into that large foundation world. Again, I think it goes back to Islamophobia. It's our internalized Islamophobia saying, oh, I couldn't, I, I would never ask for a million dollars. I don't deserve a million dollars. I don't know if my organization could really reach to that level. And then there's the outside world telling us, yeah, why would, you know, your organization that's only been around for five years, you know, be worthy of that uh, grant? Why would your organization even apply to that grant? And through the year of learning, what I also learned as a funder, I had about 130 conversations last year 
in the 130 conversations, I heard words like, oh, I'm so sorry, we're religion blind, or we're religion discriminatory, or we just don't find religious activities. And before I went into the organizations, I would be like, hmm, look at your 990. I actually saw in 2020, you funded 25 Christian organizations. Wow, you have a Jewish board member. So if you're religion blind, how could you have a Jewish board member? Because it clearly said rabbi so-and-so. So I said, just the way you're funding Christian and Jewish organizations and faith-based organizations, because you know they're uplifting the community, what does it look like to also fund Muslim-led organizations? Because a refugee that comes from a predominant Muslim community or a country is not going to go to a organization that they don't feel most comfortable with. They're gonna go to a mosque. They're gonna go in a community where maybe someone might wear a hijab or someone might understand their cultural sensitivities. So when I kept pushing back, they're like, wow, that's really interesting. No one's really kind of pushed us on that. Let us think about it. Then I would have a second conversation. I realized when I had the seven, second conversation, I hit a home run. Then I could tell these you know, CEOs and presidents that had like billions of dollars behind them, hey, you need to see Muslim communities as an asset-based. Not as just sucking money from your foundation, but let's listen to the community. So the third year of our research-based initiative is called um, Collaboration Through Sustainability. So Alhamdulillah, right now we're in our third year. Our 22 organizations are doing something called a Muslim Collaboration Prizes. We have gotten $1 million for the Muslim Collaboration Prizes. $500,000 came from Chicago Community Trust. So for two years, Chicago Community Trust watched our family and watched um, a Community Collaboration Initiative, and they're like, Wow, you, you're, you really understand the Muslim community. You really see this value. How do we learn more? So we got a $500,000 check from them. But it is so important as Muslims, we not just look to our larger community to support us, but how does a Muslim community support itself? Alhamdulillah, through funding, we got $500,000 through Muslim funding. So 500,000 through Chicago Community Trust, 500,000 through Muslim funding. And inshallah, the prize, um, Muslim Collaboration Prize will be announced on October 1st. So we'll see who wins the Muslim Collaboration Prize, inshallah.